Fronius and BYD together for top performance. Hello everybody and welcome to today's special webinar. Today we have got partnered up together with BYD and we will give you very close insights into our compatibilities and our products and solutions. So your Fronius team today consists of me. My name is Kul Sandro. I'm from the team trainings and education in Wells in Upper Austria at the Fronius International Headquarters. And I'm very, very happy to also have one BYD manager today on board, which is, who is Alvaro Garcia. Hello, Alvaro, can you already hear us? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, yeah, thank, thank you for the opportunity. It's a great to always present together with Fronius. So as you mentioned, I am a part of EFT Systems, which we are the service and training partners of the BYD Battery Box. And I'm in charge of all new markets or most of the markets that uh, they are English speaking uh, around, around Europe and a bit parts of uh, other, other parts of the world. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Alvaro, for joining today. So, um, coming to the agenda, so it will consist today of two parts. So, the first part, or the Fronius related topics, I will cover it today. So, I will make uh, give you an overview of the Fronius and BYD storage solutions from the Fronius side. What is very important for this webinar, we said we also want to make it somehow a little bit technical. It means uh, I will also go a little bit into detail about installation and commissioning and how you can set up such a Fronius and BYD system. And then the second part will consist of Alvaro's part. He will go more into detail concerning the BYD and also the BYD installation and commissioning process. Okay, let's start directly into the topic. So what it is all about. So we are currently here at Fronius uh, seeing a clear trend towards sector integration. So I've put in here a picture of a, would say a PV system, how it could look like nowadays. So it's not simply uh, more the simply conversion from DC into AC. So such systems come become more and more complex, more and more complicated, and it's all about the sector integration. It means we are moving towards sector heating and cooling. We are also going much more in the immobility sector. And also one part which is which we see at Fronis is becoming more and more important is the storage topic which of course stores the surplus energy of the day um, in, the, in a stationary battery and of course provides then the energy during the nighttime. And therefore such, such a system uh, with, a, with a battery in it is, uh, on, is a very trend topic and it's coming more and more. Therefore we have got a very new solution here at Fronius. We have got the Fronius Gen 24 Plus inverter. That's our new hybrid inverter, our uniquely versatile hybrid inverter. I've put in here the key facts about the, our new hybrid inverter. On the one hand, uh, the latest news, uh, I would say one month ago, we launched the Fronius Simo Gen 24 Plus. That's the new three-phase hybrid inverter in the power classes 6, 8, and 10 kilowatts. It has got now two MPPT trackers. That means it's becoming more and more flexible in the system design. And it has got one separate battery input where we are fully compatible with BYD. And it's available now. So we launched it approximately one month ago and it's ready for order. That means the Simogen 24 Plus is already out. The counterpart for the single phase market, it means our single phase hybrid inverter will be the Primogen 24 plus. plus. 
that will be available in power classes from three to six kilowatts, again with two MPPTs and one separate battery input and will come at the beginning of next year where we also have then a single phase hybrid inverter. Another existing hybrid inverter we have got in our product portfolio is the Simo Hybrid. So that's, um, I would say, still some time uh, available. It was launched a few years ago. It's the Fronius Simo Hybrid. It's a three phase hybrid inverter out of our Snap Inverter series. Maybe you have came across it already. It's uh, available in the power classes, three to five kilowatts AC output power and has got one MPPT and one battery input and is a very, very reliable inverter over many, many years uh, with highest efficiency levels and also maximum self-consumption. So the new Gen 24 Plus will be a completion of our hybrid inverter portfolio means now we are available up to 10 kilowatts and the Simo Hybrid will also of course continue. That means it will still be available for smaller power classes. And yes, we are fully compatible with the BYD HVS and HVM series. That means with the Simo Gen 24 Plus as well as with the Fronius Simo Hybrid, we have the full compatibility. It means with the Simo Hybrid, we have got battery input with maximum of 16 amps. And now with the Gen 24 Plus device, we have we are available up to 22 amps in the battery input. We have also very high charging and discharging powers. This means that's a little bit depending on the battery type you have and uh, an amount of modules you're using, but it would be possible up to 6.5 kilowatts on the Simo hybrid and nine kilowatts in maximum of charging, discharging currents, currents with the Gen 24 plus device. That's uh, concerning technical details. What is very important uh, when it comes to the BYD storage combinations with Fronius is please be sure there are a lot of different types um, depending on the amount of modules and please be sure if you want to realize such customer projects to check in in, in advance what type of um, what type of battery you want to use and of course also what inverter you're using because not everybody is available or compatible with every inverter. And that's the, com the combination matrix. That means you see here, for example, the Simo Gen 24 Plus is available with the HVS from 5 to 1 to 10.2 kilowatt uh, hours storage capacity and the HVM from 11 kilowatt hours to 22.1. Please check, just keep that in mind and check this before installing such a system. And also the charging and discharging power with Fronius is kind of a little bit depending on the, on the battery size. Therefore, uh, a list, a table again with lots of numbers. I won't go here now into detail about the numbers. I will just want to point out the most essential ones. Uh, Alvaro will give you will give us further insights in the voltage levels of the batteries and of course uh, just be sure that that's again depending on the battery size uh, and on the battery type whether it's the HVS or HVM but we have again a max of nine kilowatts um, with the Simochain 24 plus plus and with the highest configuration of the HVS or the highest configuration of the HVM battery. And we can deliver this even in case of a grid outage. That means we can realize real free phase backup power. And we have also all this power available also during grid outage situation. 
what is very essential when it comes to such energy management systems, such advanced systems, I would say BB battery storage systems, is of course an erroneous smart meter. You need you need this device at the feed-in point. That means we also have launched here in the past weeks some kind of facelift. So that's I would say the old erroneous smart meter, and this is the facelift version of the smart meter. That's how the new one looks like. It has got effectively the same features or functions. So it's a bi-directional energy meter which differentiates between grid supply and grid feed-in. And it is of course a basis for the complete monitoring in Fronio Solar Web. And it's also a basis if you want to have a battery storage system, you have to install it at the feed-in point uh, a primary smart meter, that's a key essential. And we also have got the Multiflow again on board with our Gen24 Plus device, or also with the Simo Hybrid. That means our inverter can handle parallel energy flows like you can see here on the image. So it's kind of uh, a, cent a centralized device for all the energy flows. And you see it, we can produce energy from the PV generator supply directly. Our loads can maybe take out some energy uh, simultaneously from the battery. And if we have uh, a separate um, uh, separate PV system or uh, like here wind power integrated, we can also uh, put it in here and all the energy flows are managed by our Fronius hybrid inverter. And what is very, very important when it comes to the Gen24 Plus uh, device or also Fronius hybrid inverters in general is that we are 100% capable of backup power. That means uh, we can um, guarantee the maximum independence during a grid outage situation with our two backup options. The first option is the full backup. That means we have got, we can provide real free phase backup power and the entire household would be supplied in case of such a grid outage situation. Uh, there is an automatic switch over. That means depending on your local grid supplier, there are many, many restrictions. Um, what you're in use to ensure this grid separation but uh, when it's configured, there is an automatic switch over uh, and again, uh, there is an automatic separation from the grid and also a autom automatic reconnection to the grid. So, uh, of course, there is a battery required for such a full backup solution, but this is uh, more or less full, fully automatic. This was the, so we have got two options uh, for the Gen24 Plus. One is the full backup and one um, very interesting feature for uh, the Gen24 Plus device is also our basic backup power function. This is so-called the PV point. Maybe you have heard about it uh, already. So that's an own exit at the inverter. Uh, it's one phase. It's a special feature of the Fronius Gen24 Plus uh, devices. And uh, it's just an own exit on the inverter where you can connect a socket to it. And this socket, the so-called PV point, is supplied in case of grid outage uh, with the PV uh, yield, which is currently generated. That means in daytime situation, you can take out energy from this socket uh, and supply loads up to three kilowatts. That means uh, you have to, you do not have to charge uh, extra fees or um, have extra costs. This is standardized, integrated in our devices and you also do not have some backup switch or additional installations required. So this is uh, automatically handled by the inverter. You just have to configure it when for an initial commissioning. 
Okay, so much to the more general topics, I would say. And now I will directly jump into the installation and commissioning process. So I will show you now how you can set up such a system with Fronius and PYD uh, and how to configure it. Principally, our inverters are very, very easy to install. That means, uh, yes, we have a very, very fast commissioning process. Our inverter has got some such some such a lightweight wall bracket. So you just have to mount it on the wall uh, with uh, four screws and then you uh, snap in the whole power unit or the whole inverter uh, with our snap in principle and then the installation process is more or less done. The next step uh, is just the cabling, um, which is also very, very easy. You have some fast access via this 180 degrees fast locking screws um, where you can remove the DATCOM cover and then you directly get into the uh, inside of the inverter uh, where we have, we have such kind of spring clamps, spring connection where you do not need any additional tools or torques. You just open the clamp, put in the cable, uh, and then close it, and the cabling is also done. Yes. And that's how the inverter looks like uh, from the inside. So you can see here, in general, on the left, you have all the DC, DC uh, connections. That means here is the PV one and PV2, that means MPP tracker one and two, and also the plus and minus for the battery, which you can see here, which is also marked black um, to have it really uh, optic, op optimally uh, visualized. On the right hand side, we have got all the AC terminals. That means here we have the AC output and this separate clamp, I told you before, the separate exit on the inverter, this is the PV point clamp where you can then configure if you want or if your customer requires it, the basic grid backup power function, uh, the PV point. We have here one grounding terminal block for general groundings uh, in the inverter. And in the middle, there is our data communication, which is called the pilot. And we have got all plugs on it, which we are further in use when you want to connect uh, also the inverter to the battery, uh, the, the communication. We need these ports here from the pilot. And that's the pilot in detail. So we have got one orange plug in the middle. That's the key essential when it comes to BYD communication. So principally, we have got two Modbus uh, interfaces, so we are communicating with PYD via Modbus. That means uh, on this uh, orange plug, we have got Modbus 0 and Modbus 1. You can decide uh, what, what you how you want. You can use Modbus 1 or Modbus 0. There is uh, effectively no, no difference. Uh, you can choose it on your own. Just please be sure to activate this Modbus 0 and Modbus 1 switches. These are the termination resistances. Uh, just please be sure to terminate it correctly, whether you're using Modbus 0 or Modbus 1. And also ground the shield of the cable. Therefore, we have got also two shielding points on the orange plug. And that's effectively the communication to the PYT battery box. So that's Modbus plus, Modbus minus ground signal. And again, a plus V, that means that's plus 12 volts. That's additionally required when you want to communicate with the PYT battery boxes, you need this plus 12 volts signal as well. Okay, that was it with the Gen 24 Plus device, uh, but of course also the Simo Hybrid, like I told before, is fully compatible with BYD. Therefore, we have again uh, one orange plug. So there are no three plugs, there is simple one plug. Uh, 
uh, and it's again the same communication so you only have one Modbus port here but uh, you see it here I've marked it with a, with a red window T plus T minus ground and again this plus 12 volt SQL you're in need when you want to communicate to the BYT battery storage solutions and just please be sure here again the termination resistance that's a common error and uh, often customers call our technical support because of incorrect um, termination uh, of the communication line just please be sure always at the end of the line to set the switches correctly uh, and therefore guarantee um, a proper communication. Yes, that was the communication part. Uh, many one very important thing for you as installer, everything uh, you have to configure uh, via the commissioning is now done here at Fronius via a new app which was already launched a few weeks ago, which is called the Fronius Solar Start app. Uh, you can find it uh, in the Google Play Store, but also in the App Store of iOS. So that's uh, an overall commissioning app for all our products, whether the Gen 24 Plus, but also the Snap Inverter. Uh, and it's a very user-friendly, so high usability with three easy steps. You can see it here, the network, the product, and the solar web assistant. Um, just click through it. Um, it's, I would say, self-explanatory, uh, and you can successfully commission uh, the inverter and also the battery uh, within very, very few minutes. Maybe one or two screenshots before I had uh, hand over the words to Alvaro. How does this look like in the product wizard when it comes especially to the battery? So there is um, especially one point important, it's the device configuration in the product wizard, that means in the first wizard. And the second point is the components. So if you have done it correctly, uh, there will appear the PYD P box uh, premium HVS or, or, or HVM and then you can uh, add the battery you see it here uh, red uh, you can add it you can do some, some advanced settings there are default values set for example for the state of charge uh, mode of the minimum and also the maximum but you can uh, of course uh, change this and you can also allow uh, the charging from the grid or from the home grid or from public grid it's also two settings you can do and then you can edit so it's a very straightforward process uh, just download the Fronius solar start app um, and click through it it's very very easy for the simo hybrid so if you have got maybe customers outside which have got a simo hybrid installed and who want to decide for a byd battery Therefore, please be sure to do a software update. That's very important. So we are uh, compatible since August this year with the new batteries and also our Simo Hybrid. Please be sure to do an update in advance. Uh, and this is then done with the technician wizard. So you see here a screenshot uh, where you have to uh, also add the battery again. Uh, you see it when the SOC value appears, that means then the inverter detected the battery and you can just connect it uh, and do the settings. So principally, uh, this is done via the initial commissioning process, but of course you can do it anytime at the later stage, just connect to the inverter uh, and change the settings uh, and then this is done correctly. And of course, uh, you have got the full visualization in our monitoring tool in our Fronius Solar Web. That means uh, on any mobile device, uh, you have got the same view. Uh, you see all the energy balances on a daily, monthly, and yearly basis. 
Uh, you can also run uh, remote updates that's um, coming more and more important um, to use from your solar web not only for visualization and data analysis but to use it also as a remote service tool to all the time uh, guarantee uh, a smooth operation uh, and of course uh, to have satisfied customers there is also a basic version which is free of charge and uh, there is a chargeable option uh, of the premium version which is around about 20 25 euros per year where you have got some advanced features and advanced views uh, if you are interested in that again uh, when you have got installed a battery you have very very beautiful pictures in the solar web and beautiful graphs i've put out here just one uh, one example how a battery system can look like you have got here in the bubble chart the battery all the time added um, and in a daily view you see for example this is a pv production curve and uh, uh, yellow underlaid that's the battery the, the power to battery and you see um, at this specific day this customer has got uh, till noon 100% uh, self-consumption because all the surplus energy is being stored uh, and in this case the customer has got also installed uh, from his own pilot that means that our hot water and heating solution so uh, he uh, has got really sector integration realized in his household and therefore very, very high self-consumption ratios. Okay, and that's my last slide. Why Fronius and PUID? Yes, um, therefore I want to present you this slide. So uh, we have um, done today, uh, this year, uh, first time ever a common testing at the energy storage inspection 2020 so that's a very well known and um, uh, very very widespread uh, inspection so um, in the PV industry it's uh, very very well known um, to come to the point we have um, tested let testing uh, our Fronius Simo Gen 24 Plus device together with the BYD battery box for the first time and we reached the first place at this energy storage inspection of the HTW Berlin that's a university with the highest overall efficiency so we really had the best result of all time in the energy storage inspection and that's I think uh, a clear advantage and pro argument uh, why you have to choose for Fronius and BYT. Uh, we have got a very, very good relationship and long-term partnership. So therefore, this more or less underlines the great compatibility and the great reliability of the system uh, with the Energy Storage Inspection 2020. Yes. Okay, that was my last slide. Um, so far, so good. Uh, I will now hand over the presentation to Alvaro. Alvaro, are you still here? Can you hear yes. us? Yes, uh, I've just unmuted myself. Okay, perfect. So I gave you now the rights uh, as a moderator and now you can continue. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see it perfectly. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Sandra. It was very, very interesting. And I always learn a little, a couple more tricks about how to install a, a Gen 24 system. So thank, thank you very much. Um, now we're going to go deeper into the battery. It's true that there will be uh, some element of of, uh, of installation. Can I see? Yeah. We will be also going into the installation of the battery side, so we won't uh, go as as deep on on the inverter, more just uh, on the design uh, in the beginning part of the design and selecting the inverter and so on. But it will be the short presentation will be, be half 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 on what's new in 2020, all the the premium uh, generation, and then the second one going deeper into the the product. So well. 
2020 and where what a year we uh, we had all the the great uh, expectations we had uh, completely uh, turn around revamped all all our our generational products everything was uh, ready to go we had all all the designs are going and of course as you can understand there was a, a bit of a of a surprise so this was I mean, it was disruptive for everyone but it, it it must it caught us in a bit of an uh, of a bad time in between changing generations however uh, we did we, we did take the hint we uh, adapted to the, to the situation and decided to learn from the from the experience and, and essentially learn from from hardship so first of all as a company uh, byd this came a lot from very much from the top of byd from the the founder and ceo of byd one trump who in a as soon as the crisis happened and this was actually during the chinese holidays he called all the management of byd and and decided to uh, to do something about it so in just 10 days uh, BYD started manufacturing uh, face masks, well, face masks and other other protective equipment, and this was actually built from scratch during the holidays. So they machined their own component, they they got their designs and they started doing from scratch the product and the equipment to manufacture. And in just a few weeks, the uh, BYD became the world largest manufacturer of face masks, and they're currently producing between 50 and 100 million masks a day. And um, this same attitude uh, was uh, passed to the to the rest of the organization. So, in the middle of of this crisis, uh, we still continue to go forward with the new product development and the new production development. And as of, I believe, is this month when we have reached the the peak of what we're looking for in, in this uh, this year. And this is about yet uh, close to 10 times as much uh, production as uh, every month last last year so hopefully this means that uh, soon everyone will be able to have very short lead times uh, for all uh, all our products the other big uh, change that was done not only the production but also the de the design in itself these uh, so we took all the feedback from all the previous years since the battery box was launched in 2015 and even this uh, things as small as the screw that it had been feedback from the market on how to make the assembly of the product uh, easier and quicker so we we decided to impl impl put together all those improvements that we have been receiving from the market for the last four or five years to create this thing that we call this premium design, this universe, universal framework um, of uh, of the uh, the new battery box. Uh, however, I understand a lot of you uh, are are still using the in the old unit or half systems uh, in the in the field that are using the the former version of the battery box and as you know this is was BYD's promise that those systems could be expanded at any time so we have maintained that we have maintained a production line to continue in the producing the modules for extension we developed a, a system in our in our website so you could continue requesting and generating the demand of uh, of these uh, uh, legacy products and to be able to offer you still that promise of uh, expanding your system at any time. And of course, another a big thing in 2020, it would really turn in the tide around is what Sandra just mentioned, is uh, the winning the, the efficiency test for the th third year in a row. This time, uh, together with, uh, with Pronius, reached the highest value ever. We will continue in 2020, we continue with our commitment to create a, a world of zero emission so on the one hand the product has changed but also we wanted to change the things that are outside of the product too or the way we we produce and the way we deliver goods so we have uh, changed completely our packaging to uh, to remove or to reduce the the amount of plastic in it uh, to con to change the type of uh, of protection from from the the fo uh, foam 
to a more environmental friendly uh, cardboard based so to just to con try to continue with making this a uh, complete vision of making a or getting towards a world of zero carbon emissions the other strong commitment that byd has continued not only continuing the design but actually uh, upgrading is this commitment to uh, lithium iron phosphate uh, this image you see in the front, that's the the latest uh, BYD car, the BYD Han, that uses the, the for the first time, the BYD Blade game, uh, battery, that uses the new type of Super LFP, that is a, a battery that even in, a, in the event of an internal short circuit, it would uh, only increase the temperature to 30 degrees, compared to the 500 so degrees that you get from a from uh, the, the typical electric vehicle batteries or, for, or mobile phone batteries. Of course, a big part of the BYD DNA uh, has been uh, introduced and upgraded in the latest uh, the generation, is uh, implementing all the high standards uh, of uh, high safety standards in the new product, including especially the, the VDE 2510 of uh, functional safety. So, summarizing this, it uh, just gives you and your clients even more uh, of uh, the battery box premium. They continue with the, the idea of having something simple and flexible and very powerful for, uh, for all your projects. Now in, in partnership strongly with, uh, with Bronian. And in a other, uh, other segment, I, I know that some, some of you have uh, checked about this. This will eventually make it to uh, the whole world. Right now we have this uh, commercial system available in, uh, in Germany, but we are, uh, we're hoping that through more uh, partnerships, uh, we will be able to reach there and offer your solutions for the whole world. So now we go in, into the, the battery box premium family. So the, on the high voltage side, the HVS H, uh, and HVM, which are compatible with, uh, with, uh, with Fronius, and on the low voltage side, the LVS and the LVL. So for those of you that are familiar with the, with the previous generation, this is a bit of a, the translation between the previous uh, models and the new ones. So the high voltage has actually been split in two. Now to give you an option for uh, power and an option for capacity. So as you, you saw in Sandra's presentation, Pronius offers you uh, the generation 24 uh, offers 22 amps um, of a, of con a continuous current, and that's why when you combine it with the the HVS that has uh, these are a 20 25 amp power modules, but they increase on 100 volts uh, each uh, module that you you add in series. You'll be increasing for each module about 2.2 kilowatts of power. Whereas with HVM, every extra module you add on top, you would be adding 1.1 uh, kilowatts of power. And on the low, low voltage side, the, the small units have been unified in a single one in the LVS that is uh, about to, to reach the European, the European and the UK market. And the, the light commercial version, the 13.8, has been upgraded to the LVL. So now we will go deeper into the step, all the steps of the installation. As uh, Sandra mentioned, it's a, it's a bit of a presentation of the product, but at the same time, we want to go deeper into the installation to let you familiarize yourselves. So you've had the, the steps that you need to follow on the inverse side, and this is what you would need to do a bit before to install and, and commission the battery. So the HPS and the HPM, so HPS, each of the modules 100 volts, each of them 25 amp hours. Um, you just need two of them to uh, for the for system to start, whereas in the HPM you need three of them, so three of 50 volts modules to reach 150 volts in nominal. So the HPS can reach 12.8 kilowatt hours, so there's five five of them in series to uh, to reach the the, the the biggest of a single tower, and you can have up to three of those towers in parallel. And in the case of the HVM, you can have up to eight uh, eight modules in series, 
and putting three of them in uh, three of those towers in parallel you could reach up to 66 kilowatt hours of capacity in a single system in terms of how how this compares with the with the all the old high voltage system there's been improvement on energy density a significant improvement in energy density and quite importantly especially here in, in the uk that it gets uh, it can get a bit cold in winter the d rating actually now it now it starts at uh, five degrees so it's very close to uh, very close to zero degrees uh, that you will be able to work at full power both for discharge and especially for charge very important, that's something we, we, that Sandra mentioned before, the compatibility. Please uh, always take a look at the latest compatibility, uh, compatible inverter list. Make sure, because uh, depending on the, the amount of units that you put in series, the system would have a more or less voltage. So please take into, in, this into consideration because you might end up exceeding or being below the the voltage range of the inverter that's why some of these uh, are, are actually left empty so make sure that the model that you or your clients are interested is compatible with the with the inverter that you're looking for and and also use this to confirm what is the the earliest version of the firmware that is compatible between between those two so the the first step of the battery installation it's uh, quite simple this uh, the cable less assembly where uh, we clip those uh, those batteries together and as i as i showed before with a, with a single screw a single m4 screw it is possible to assemble one module to the next and as the batteries can uh, are, are fairly slender to so make sure to uh, to attach use the brackets provided to attach them to the wall to avoid any any kind of uh, of risk, the two models, the HVS and the HVN, they are both using the the universal design that we mentioned. The side effect of that is that they can be very similar in look. So make sure that on the one hand uh, you're keeping an eye on on the label, on the the large sticker with a different color that you, we have for each of the models, and then once they get installed just make sure that on this bottom left hand side you have the same the same pattern also essentially the same same type of a of battery one vertical bar is the hbs two vertical bars is the hvm make sure that they don't get mixed because you will be putting the modules of a, a different voltage together uh, the next step is the connection side. So we focus a lot on this cover because it, uh, it needs to be securely locked for the system to work. So we'll get that, that at the end of this, this uh, section. So remove the cover and all the connections are in the same place. So you don't need to uh, open the BCU completely. You just have this area that here on the top side, you have the top left hand side, you have the communication area. So you have two options, either using a terminal block to pick the, the pins that are the correct ones for this inverter, or you can crimp a cable using a Cat5, Cat6 a, a cable to use either the, the CAN or the RS-485 port. In the manual, you will see, you, you'll be able to see, and in the quick installation guide provided with the BCU, you will be able to see what are, what are the pinout for uh, Fronis' Modbus. Uh, the dip switches by default will be in the right place, but just make sure if you're having any communication issues, make sure that by mistake, none of these dip switches have been put in the, in the wrong place. Um, also here, you have a hardware internet connection. This is, uh, I'll, I'll get deeper later, but this is quite useful for you and for us uh, you know, to provide service in, in the long term of the product. On the bottom left hand side, we have the grounding. The grounding simply connects to the outside casing of the of the battery, and it makes sure that all the surfaces are at the same potential. And on the right hand side, you have the power the power connections. Please take into uh, take into account that the middle uh, middle one is actually empty. So you only have the plus and the positive and the negative. The grounding, remember, is on the bottom left-hand side of the 
of the, the connection area. So here, exactly here. So I always start first with the, uh, with the ground connection. Make sure that not, not only from a safety point of view, but actually from a communication point of view, it, all, it can also affect. So make sure that you remind all of your clients to, to use the ground connection to ground all the batteries. And this is what I mentioned about the, the three different, well, the two different ways of connecting on the bottom side, crimping an RJ45 uh, port, and on the top, by connecting by using the different pins. So most of the inverters would have both options for you to choose. And as I said, the internet connection is very important uh, because I, you don't know what could happen going forward. You would want you would want to be able to save a trip if something has any solution, or even if uh, your customer uh, mentions that something abnormal happened, you'll be able to look at the well. We would be able to look at the history of the of the issue and confirm if something happened, if there was any alarm, anything to be concerned, or not at all. Or if something, if any of the systems uh, we uh, we observe later on that require an update, is something that we can do remotely. And finally, uh, in the connections, we go to the DC connections. So as mentioned before, the middle the middle hole is empty. So you use the left and the right hand side for positive and negative, and you don't need to screw anything. Just just close the uh, the green clips from the top, and close the cover. As I mentioned before, the system will not work with the covers open. This is one, one of the improvements we have introduced to uh, comply with BD2510, that there will be no exposed connection, no post and a very, well, there will be no chance of a, for our end user to tamper with the, with the batteries or and end up having any live connection. As soon as they open that cover, the, the contactor in the, well, the this, the switch in the battery, the break in the battery will trip, so there'll be no voltage coming out of the battery. And the most special case is the, the, parallel, the parallel connection. So you can have up to three of the batteries connected to a single, a single inverter, in, and the connection is quite straightforward. Make sure that you are using exactly the same power cable going from each of the towers to the, to the bus bar, and make sure that you are you are connecting the communication between the master, the master the one that is communicated with the inverter, and the rest of the batteries. This is done using these two RJ45 ports. And the only exception of the deep switch uh, uh, rule is here for for the middle tower. You would actually have to switch the bot the bottom uh, deep switch to the other side. And the final, the, th the third step is the commissioning. So very important. First of all, start with the uh, switching on the batteries. Then do the commissioning of the of the battery uh, near the battery system. You just need to commission one of them. So you commission the the master, and the master will uh, will will address automatically all the slaves. Switch on the uh, then you would do that using the app and then switch on the inverter uh, and then you can do the setup that Sandro has mentioned before. For these you can use the the app. So this is uh, available both in the in the place in the Android Play Store and the Apple Store, and you just uh, find a search in uh, uh, B Connect B uh, BYD or you can find this QR code in our in our manuals also the money provided inside the BCU. So fair, first important recommendation here, we understand that in some of the installations, internet might be a bit shaky. So very important, before you go to site, uh, make sure that you have internet and download the latest firmware. This as this uh, can save you problems uh, afterwards if you're having a problem with the communication and it keeps uh, rejecting the firmware because it realizes that you haven't updated there. So it is better to have the latest one in the in the phone. So when you go to site, you don't need to connect to the internet at all. Um, you connect to the to the battery Wi-Fi, and then you update the the firmware. As, as I mentioned, there are two components in the BCU. You have the the BMS and the BMU. So the the BMU is the element that communicates with the inverter, and the BMS is the one that's managing each of the cells in inside the the batteries. And then once you have updated the firmware, it's just 
uh, four, uh, four really simple steps. Confirm the, the time, then uh, select the type of battery that you have uh, installed, then the inverter, that if if in the inverter drop down you see that the inverter you're trying to install is not there there are only two options either you have selected the wrong inverter and in the, you're you installing a non-compatible inverter or you have selected the wrong battery when you were um, when you were doing the, the previous step and the final one you select if it's good if it's a single phase a three phase on grid off grid or backup you have a, a different alternative. Uh, those of you that prefer to bring the laptop to site, there is a, a is a deeper kind of software. This is a software that we can use also for service. So you can have the program for the laptop and use that one to, to commission the system. So actually you'll be able to use the tab of system information to commission the, the battery. And also you'll be, you'll be able to use the diagnostic, the updated section and the history of alarm these can be used for commissioning or for diagnosing a problem later on. So again, reminding the, the switching procedure. So if you have a, a break in between, as I say, each of, the, each of the batteries has its own breaker. So optional, if you have a breaker in between, make sure that this one is closed first and then one by one uh, switch on the, the batteries. And the final step, so when the batteries are on and they have been commissioned, final step, switch a uh, switch on the inverter once the batteries are on you will see a sequence on the L in the front of the battery this is the the sequence of the L led light so at, when it starts before it has been commissioned it will be uh, switching between uh, white and blue white and blue and once you have commissioned it that sequence will change and then one uh, it will be a different a different sequence uh, one probably depicting no communication with the inverter but once you switch on the inverter you commission the inverter that sequence will change to white which means it's okay if that sequence doesn't change to white you'll have both in the manuals and in the service guidelines the explanation of each of the sequences at the same time you'll be able to use the B-Connect Plus to see if you have any alarms inside the, the unit. And in case you need, you need to uh, switch it off, first uh, switch off the inverter. And second, very importantly, press the button. So press the button during, uh, for five seconds and this will actually switch off all the batteries at the same time. And then afterwards, you can uh, open the, and the breaker in between the, and the battery and the inverter. For extension, it's a, it's a similar process than those of you that have done extensions with the previous generation of, uh, of high voltage batteries. Take into account that these are uh, batteries connected in series. So in order to avoid having issues with balancing or taking a very long time to balance a, a system or and losing capacity or, uh, in the short term, please add them at the capacity that they're being brought from manufacturing. So the batteries are being, are being manufactured and leaving the factory at 30%. So if you're going to add a new module to, uh, to an old system, make sure that the system is stopped at 30% and then you add the battery. And I want to finish with uh, a section that I find one of the most important ones because you've just gone through this presentation really quickly and possibly you think that you're going to remember all the steps but it's not an uncommon that you will forget those steps or you will forget the important areas you will you will not remember what would, of course you will not remember then the sequences because we haven't provided them in the presentation so we want you to if there's one thing we want you to remember is where to find all the resources uh, for for you to get help so first of all the two main websites we have the bydbatterybox.com. These in this one you'll be able to find all the the product information, the, the, all the the commercial, the data sheets, the manuals, etc. So the, all the product information, you'll be able to find the same documents in the EFT system website. So both of the websites you'll be able to find the basic manuals, data sheets. Plus in the EFT website you'll start to get more detailed technical and service data. So you'll find. The, the some warranties, some some certificates. So that's information you'll only be able to find in the EFT website. Furthermore, 
we have developed a number of uh, service uh, or support tools over there. Uh, a lot of self-help tools, such as uh, service guidelines. So based on the experience we've had uh, with the uh, systems in uh, uh, other systems or other parts of the world, we have developed these uh, service guidelines with the common questions and the common issues. Uh, you'll be able to see over there, for example, if uh, you find a particular sequence in the LED, what things to check or what mistakes could have been uh, made, or quite clearly say, this is the sequence, this has no solution, needs to be replaced, contact service. So with that information, we know you've gone through the, the service guidelines, you have checked what needed to be checked, and then uh, uh, authorizing a replacement is a lot easier. Also based on the experience, we have developed the, that help center that uh, I'll show you later in a, bit of a big, bigger screen of it. This is mostly focused on the, uh, on the list of questions that people have been asking, we've been collecting all the questions that uh, people ask us when they call on the phone, and the most frequently asked ones, we have put them in this help center. And finally, the online service center. This is where you can go, on the one hand, to uh, set up your uh, your systems. Every time you, you make a new installation, we recommend that you register all the information here. That way, in the event of a, of a service case, we can log into your system, and we can see what kind of configuration you have there. You have the serial numbers, uh, etc. So if we need to do any replacement, you can just a couple of clicks, uh, uh, in just a couple of clicks, we can authorize over the uh, replacement component. So <clears throat> all these can be found from the EFT system website, uh, both on the download section and the online service center. And uh, here down is the help center. A uh, very important, don't get shocked, the online service center right now it's in German only. So if you need, if you are going to uh, visit it, I would recommend using Chrome as it will, it will translate it automatically. I, I use it and for me it's, uh, I barely see a difference. This is how we manage to keep the, the content always at the latest. So we always make sure that, that uh, this one page that has the latest information. Probably in the future, we will release the, the same website in other languages. Over here, we have the frequently asked questions, the, the documents, and again, link to the technical support. And in that technical support, same as the, the service center, you'll find the service guidelines and service checklist. The, I, I cannot insist enough on the, the value of the service guidelines. This is something that I even use it myself to uh, whenever I get get information of a of a case I have not seen before, because they probably say one of my colleagues, especially in Germany, they have the, the largest volume in installations, but they have seen this before. So I can uh, we can use that to to solve the problem really quickly. And register in the online service center. Or be, uh, or you have the login section and sign up if you haven't haven't registered yet. Uh, in this online service center you can register your systems and you actually get uh, automatically you start collecting some points for the B partner it is true that we still haven't released what benefits uh, the uh, the points are providing you but uh, your points are not lost we we do see uh, your registrations we do see the points that you are accumulating and you will be able to use them in the future once we uh, we define the the program a bit more and very, very important, the tickets. This is where we're collecting all the information about the communication we have had uh, about uh, any problem. This is the, the also the system we use to arrange uh, replacements. So you will be able to use the, ticket, uh, the tickets for you to track the deliveries of your components. Um, you can register all the... Uh, all the current systems and the and the form and the leg legacy products, so all the HVS, LBS, LBL, uh, LV, HV, Pro, etc., and uh, even the commercial systems. But as as mentioned before, these only in the German. So summarizing, I I think we have a, a really winning combination here uh, with with Pronius and the new battery box premium. Uh, already got it and getting the support of the experts with the with the high, uh, highest efficiency uh, being tested but at the same time we, we 
what we really want to see is the it being a big uh, winning combination for you. Let you uh, bring clean energy to more and more of your clients. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Alvaro for your very, very interesting presentation. I think this was really high quality content uh, for the audience. Yes, we have come now to an end. So uh, we have received some questions in the chat. So uh, I answered them personally. I will also pass some questions forward to Alvaro or EFT systems in general. Uh, which uh, are more or less their topics. Uh, I hope you liked the content. Um, if there are any any questions open, please type them in now. We will remain just a few minutes online. Uh, I will just mute ourselves, but we will stay in the chat. Uh, thanks also to BYD. Thanks, Alvaro, once again. Uh, Thank you, Sandro. Yes. Uh, and, of course, you will receive all the recordings and the presentations uh, tomorrow uh, for further use. So, have a pleasant afternoon, good evening, uh, and I hope we hear or see us again soon uh, for a training or a webinar. Bye-bye. Thank you.